So I've actually primed the surface of the watercolour paper using acrylic gesso. You can use watercolour ground. So I'm using Liquitex acrylic ink here. This is muted turquoise. It's one of their new colours, but you can use any inks to have a little play. And I'm going to sort of paint a semi-abstract landscape. So I'm starting with the pipette from the ink bottle here and just painting that or squeezing that pipette wet on dry. Using a large one and a half inch flat soft head brush, I'm wetting the sky area. You can see I've used some framing tape around the edge. You can use masking tape. And I'm using my wet brush to catch that acrylic ink. And as you can see, it's flowing up into the wet sky. Now, the reason why I'm using inks, because they're a lot stronger than watercolour. They're very robust, but you can sort of dilute them with water. So which is quite nice. So you can see it's almost like a Prussian blue. So if you don't have any inks, you can try this technique with some watercolours using Prussian blue. And I'm just sort of tilting this puddle here to create the look of a sky. But also you can see the ink at the sort of bottom, the darker ink looks like the tops of trees because I'm tilting it to get those lovely soft natural edges so I'm carefully sort of tilting this it's so much fun to tilt as well you get some wonderful wet in wet effects and you can see I'm getting the effect of clouds there etc just tilting this watery dilute acrylic ink here and there and now I'm using that flat sort of damp brush just to blend at the top there and what I'm doing now is I'm adding some acrylic ink straight from the bottle with the pipette at the top and just sort of catching that ink again and blending. So you've got the dark sky above and tilting. And you can see the texture from the gesso there at the top there. So you can really create wonderful textures and you can use white matte emulsion as a substitute for acrylic gesso. So as you can see, some of the waters run into the top of the trees there, which I think is quite exciting. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to add a little bit more of that turquoise at the top and let my ink run down. I've got my brush on standby. You can see I've just sort of diluted it a little bit and then just sort of sweeping that brush into that dark ink and then sort of blending downwards. Again, I'm just experimenting. I like to use a landscape sort of scene as a sort of starting point and see where it takes me. So I've got sort of trees in the distance there with an atmospheric sky. So I'm sort of scratching into the surface here, slightly lifting off the ink. And you can see there that it kind of creates some lovely light coloured tree trunks and branches, which is quite exciting. And the gesso is actually protecting the surface of the paper. So I'm creating the look of the light tree trunks and branches in that lovely dark muted turquoise blue. What's so lovely about this is you can use your imagination. You can just play around. I'm just using one colour here as well. And again, you can use watercolour, the Prussian blue or a phthalo blue or turquoise, etc. Indigo. And I'm using the plastic card just to pull down some of that wet ink as well to create some darker tree trunks which is quite nice I haven't actually used my pencil at all and I find this very freeing up um, it's just exciting to do and especially if I've used an old sheet of watercolor paper and used the gesso or white matte emulsion over the top so I'm just using the card now to pull out some of that wet ink to create some details here and I'm going to use some muted green. These are these new Liquitex colours. Again, if you don't have these colours, don't worry. You could use a little bit of Viridian um, or Sap Green or green mixed with some Payne's Grey. And again, you can use watercolours. So I've created an imaginary path there. It looks like it's sort of narrowing as it goes towards the horizon. And I'm spritzing with my spritzer bottle just to see what happens. Now, the inks are a lot more intense than watercolours. So they're liquid, sort of strong pigment here. Doesn't get as diluted, but you get these lovely sort of effects, especially painting on this sort of gesso textured surface and I'm tilting and spritzing and I'm just seeing what happens. It's going to be semi abstract and I'm very open to, I hope, happy accidents. One of the things you can do is what I'm doing here with an old cloth is wiping off 
the ink or paint and it comes off really easy because you've got the gesso primer there and it just makes lifting off so much easier because watercolour paper is absorbent. It's a lot harder to lift off. It kind of stains the paper, whereas here you can just lift off with a paper towel or a damp cloth. So I'm using my brush just to apply a little bit more of that muted green, sort of damp into damp. And again, it's straight from the bottle. I haven't diluted it. And I'm just making bigger marks in the foreground and it creates a bit of depth and the illusion of depth because I'm using one point perspective, having the path narrow as it goes towards the horizon, lifting out with my plastic card here to create the look of grasses and making those grasses bigger in the foreground, again, creating depth. So even though I'm painting from my imagination, I'm using artistic tools to create the look of a 3D sort of painting on a 2d surface so and i'm lifting off here some little rocks again it makes it easier when you've got the gesso to lift off you go back to the white of the paper and here's a close-up here of the lifting off technique i'm sort of kind of rotating my wrist and firmly lifting off just do this once don't go back and forth all the time because you could actually damage the paper even when you have a gesso sort of primer on top so I'm just sort of building up the details there, lifting off this damp ink. And again, you can lift off the ink. I'm just wetting this area here with a wet brush and using my sort of old cloth to lift off. So I'm using some salt now and I'm going to sprinkle it onto the damp ink over the trees in the distance there. And this will absorb some of the ink to create some lighter textures. And I'm adding some burnt sienna ink in the foreground here and on the horizon line. So it sort of darkens up these areas. And I'm using a spritzer bottle just to spritz the foreground here. It gets the ink moving as well. So you can see some of that burnt sienna now, the warmth of that. And I'm just spritzing the distance there and the ink is running down and it creates a really lovely atmospheric effect. And I'm just spritzing here as well, tilting my painting just to see what happens. It's quite exciting. You can see the paints running there, the ink creating some wonderful colours and warmth. So I'm tilting here and letting that brown sort of run down there. I love to experiment like this. I haven't actually dried the painting yet and you can see there's some quite interesting things happening along the trees there where I've introduced more water as well so you've got those lighter sort of shapes so look at that isn't that delicious I just love it so I'm just adding a little bit more of the burnt sienna there along the horizon and the surface is quite wet I'm just using the pipette and I'm tilting just to see what happens see what little magical thing happens there it's quite exciting and just tilting it to the right as well I'm tilting it upside down and spritzing again just to get that ink moving, just to see what happens. And you can see even when you dilute it, you don't lose that sort of strong colour. So I'm just letting it all run down, spritzing away just to see what happens.
As you can see here, I'm just using a cocktail stick as well to create thin lines, just building up the detail. Haven't dried the painting yet, just playing and just having fun. It's like art therapy, just exploring the different things you can do wet in wet using cocktail sticks and plastic card and salt. So I'm just finishing off with a little sprinkle of salt and I'm going to allow my painting to dry naturally to allow the salt to work. And I'm going to use some white acrylic, but you can use gouache or white watercolour. I'm painting wet on dry with a thin liner brush and just to paint some lighter trees here. You can see where the salt has created some lovely textures there, especially that sort of top left field just below the trees. And uh, I'm just sort of bringing this sort of tree to life. It's got like a lovely canopy of sort of lovely brown sort of leaves and foliage. And I thought it'd be quite nice to take advantage of that. So I'm just going to build up now just using this white acrylic wet on dry. Would be quite nice as well to paint a little white fence with fence posts there just to add a little bit of detail on the horizon line there just here and there Still using this synthetic liner brush here just adding a little bit more light and white with the side of the brush on the horizon there and just softening with a clean damp brush just to soften away that edge and lift off with a paper towel just to push that back a little bit so the white doesn't stand out too much but your eye is still led there and I'm going to finish off with a little spatter here and there around the horizon line still using that white acrylic but again you can use white watercolor or white gouache and here is the finished painting I really hope you enjoy this journey using acrylic paints instead of watercolor onto a gesso prime surface if you have any questions please put them in the comments and if you'd like to support the content that I publish here on YouTube why not think about joining my patreon membership you will get access to weekly exclusive tutorials Add free content, line drawings, and you can cancel any time. If you'd like any more details about the membership, please see the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.